Hello and welcome to Let's Code an Indie Game episode 16. This is the series where we learn the tools and techniques needed to get started with indie game development. In this episode we are going to continue working on the movement for our slimes and we may add a couple of new tiles to our game as well, just so that we continue to uh, you know, update and add to the art as we go along, because we don't want to leave it, um, leave it till the end and then have to do everything at once. So just uh, open up Atom so we can take a look at what we did in the last episode. Cool, okay, so last episode we added um, bounce after player as a uh, as a piece of movement code and this really just combines two of our previous um, two of the previous movement strategies we had, one for following the player and one for bouncing and if we add them together um, we have some slimes which bounce after our player. Jolly good. Um, so let's just take a look at a few of the changes we made. Um, and this was mostly around using our new coordinate system. So inside of bounce, uh, previously we were moving in the Z axis, we're now moving in the Y axis, and we had to uh, change the, instead of adding uh, to the, sorry, instead of adding to the coordinate here, we, uh, we're now taking away um, from our Y value, so zero is on the floor and minus um, anything less than zero, minus one, minus two, etc., means we are above the floor. Um, just because of the way our coordinates have been set up. And what else? What else is worth looking at? So in follow player, we um, we switch to using X and Z, um, and this is also in all of our vector code as well. We now um, get the distance between things in the XZ plane, which is basically the floor of our game. And uh, all of this is because inside of our vector.lua class, we translate between our world coordinates and our screen coordinates um, using these of this equation here. Um, and this is a... what is this? This is um, an oblique projection, which means everything is um, kind of, a, or it's a cabinet projection actually, which means everything is at 45 degrees, um, and yes, yeah, so well not everything, but our forwards and backwards um, angle is at 45 degrees, left and right is um, is square with the screen, and up and down, or yeah, up and down in the y direction is square with the screen. Now a couple of people um, don't, basically don't like this, or don't think it's very playable, um, as a as a movement system, and that's fine. It's really easy to change, and this isn't our final. Um, yeah, this isn't our final coordinate system. The what we're trying to do at the moment is just put enough code together that we can test it, look at it, and if we decide we don't like it, we can change it. And probably the easiest change we can make here is if we change our angle from forty five degrees to ninety degrees, then we are back. If I just run the game again we're back with something very similar to our original movement um, where we no longer move at an angle, we move up and down, left and right but we still have the advantage of being able to uh, being able to bounce as well and really when we uh, set theta to 90 degrees what happens is um, math.cos of 90 is 0 or cos of 90 is 0 uh, so z times 0 is 0 so x is just equal to x so our um, x in our game world is just equal to x on our screen, and um, sine of 90 is 1, uh, and z times 1 is z. So our y value just becomes, or our y screen value just becomes our world y value plus our world z value. So if you aren't a fan of movement system, and it's totally fine not to be, this is uh, your game, um, just you can fiddle with this value here, or you know you can use whichever style of projection you want. So I'll keep it at 45 for now, but we'll probably come back and revisit this in a later episode. Right. So what shall we do this episode? Let's um, start by updating follow player so that our slimes um, cannot walk over walls. So very similar to what we did in our keyboard movement method um, a couple of episodes ago. We need to now store the differences um, in position 
uh, every update rather than just going ahead and updating those positions. So let's pull out a dx and a dz variable uh, to store those differences. And we also we know we'll need our um, our current room, and we can get this from game map current room, like so. So down here in our movement code, we can store the change we will make in the x direction as dx, and the change we will make in the z direction as dz. And that change is just equal to our unit vector, and that just gives us the uh, that basically just gives us where we need to move in order to move towards our player. Um, times our speed times game dot dt, and dt is just the time uh, the time since the last update, and we just use this to average out our movement speed, uh, so it's all nice and smooth. Cool, so we've got dx and dz. This lets us say that our new x position for our entity will be equal to our current x position plus our change in x. Our new z position will be equal to our entity's current z position plus our change in z. And now we can get our screen position, and this will be equal to um, vector dot world to screen. It's important that we uh, use the dot here actually a couple of times. I get, um, I'm so used to dealing with classes at the moment that um, I use the colon, but we, we need to use the dot because vector is a module, so it doesn't have a class. We're just accessing uh, methods directly on the vector module. World to screen, um, and this takes a vector as an argument. So let's just um, so x is equal to new x, y is equal to zero. So this is important actually. When we because our slimes bounce up and down, um, we only want to check whether we basically want to check the position they are standing in or they start their bounce from, and that will always be y equals zero, and uh, z is equal to new z. Cool. Now we can just say if room, um, and we poured room out up here, so if room is walkable in our uh, screen position, oops, screen position dot x and screen position dot um, y, then we want to go ahead and update our entity's position. Um, so we can say entity dot x, sorry, dot x is equal to new x, and entity dot z is equal to new z. Right, let's uh, see if this works. So if I run over here, and then run around this corner. Oops, I seem to have broken. Oh, nope, there we go. That was very strange for a moment there. What have I done? Anyway, but if we run around the corner, we now see that our slimes um, get stuck on the corner, which is what we wanted. Just uh, save this and run again, just to see if that uh, happens again. Nope, okay, it must have been a uh, one-off, or it's a glitch we'll discover later. But the important thing is that our slimes do get uh, stuck on the corner. Cool. So if we take a look at our... Um, keyboard movement um, code as well, we can start to see quite a lot of similarities if we move to the bottom here. We basically do the same thing uh, twice. So this is probably a sign that eventually we want to pull this code out into a common uh, into a common function or something which always does uh, does these, uh, these checks. So it gets the new x and the new z value, it gets the screen position for them, um, and it works out uh, whether that's a sorry uh, whether that's a valid position. Um, 
I think what we'll do at the moment is we will push some of this work into our room class instead. Um, and that's for a couple of reasons. One, it would just be easier if we could pass in our entities x and z position into our room class rather than having to convert to the screen position outside of it. Uh, and two, I don't, there's, a, there's a very simple rule which is one to refactor. So if you write a piece of code once, um, you write that piece of code. If you write it twice, you start to think, you know, hmm, maybe this should be its own class or its own function. And if you write a piece of code, or if you write the same code three times, then, that, then that's when you actually go ahead and pull it out into a shared or a common piece of code. Because once you've done something three times, you probably understand it. The first two times, you're still learning. Or at least I'm still learning. Um, I'm, I'm always uh, forgetting or learning. Anyway, um, let's push let's uh, push some of this into our rooms class just uh, so we're doing less work or less uh, repeated work. So inside of room uh, walkable, let's actually change this so we pass in an x and a z value instead. Let's um, grab our vector class or our vector module, vec source math vector, and here we can say the screen position is equal to vector dot world to screen, um, and here we can just pass in our vector x equals x, z equals z, and y equals zero. And here, instead of using x and y, we can now just use screenpos.x, screenpos.y, screenpos.x, screenpos.y. There we go. And now we no longer need um, this line here which is quite nice because it means we can lose a line of code here and in our walkable check we just pass in new x and new z and exactly the same in our follow player so that was our keyboard movement um, and in our follow player we can do the same the same thing and so we have slightly uh, slightly less code to maintain and a bit of a nicer way of dealing with our room walkable method. New Z, let's just check that works. Cool. Very good. Okay, so we've got a few minutes left in the episode. I'm trying to keep the length to about uh, between 20 minutes and half an hour um, for each episode. Uh, so let's add in a few more tiles. Um, so let's just open up, open up GIMP. Let it load for a second and open up. open up our code. Of course your code will be uh, in a different place wherever you've decided to save it. Mine is all in Let's Code an Indie Game. This is episode 16. Um, assets, sprites, tiles, dungeon.png. And let's just uh, set, up, um, set up GIMP for tile art again. So we'll go into image uh, configure grid and make sure our grid is 8 by 8 hit OK go into view and um, show grid and also on our pencil tool let's um, change the brush to the pixel brush and change the size of that brush to one pixel there we go and just a reminder you can hit the O button to bring up the color picker. That's probably an idea to tick sample merge now in, um, as well, just uh, in case we end up dealing with any layers later on. Um, sample merge will just take the color from the screen rather than the current layer. Um, cool. So let's add let's add um, a pit to our game um, or a ledge, uh, and we'll just treat that as another sort of non-walkable tile at the moment. 
So we'll start by just adding in another floor tile. Let's just put it down here. And this tile is going to be mostly floor. Um, hit O uh, to select our darkest color. Then if we press N, we're back with the back with the pencil tool. Uh, so yeah, this tile will be mostly floor, um, but with uh, a jagged, jagged kind of edge on it, just to show that um, you know it is it is a ledge. It's the the edge of something. So this uh, this dark color really represents um, shadow in a in our game. Um, I'm probably actually going to... I don't like having too much, uh, too many sort of blocks of color in one place because it just looks like uh, the, the line just looks a bit thick, looks a bit strange. Uh, so I'm just getting changing this pixel back to being a floor tile here. Um, okay and now let's grab our wall tile color and in fact, in fact, we don't even need uh, another tile. I think we can uh, cheat and really just get away with get away with just one tile here, which is the uh, our ledge. So let's um, overwrite dungeon.png. And now, if we go back into our tile map, or into our tile map, I think this is the first time we've looked at it uh, this episode. Um, let's add in our ledge. Um, hmm, where shall we put? Uh, let's just uh, go here, and we'll just use a V because it sort of points down uh, for our ledge. And then underneath our ledge, we've already got a tile we can use. I'll just bring it up on the screen here. zoom in. We have uh, this tile here which is perfect for going underneath our ledge and looking like it uh, drops downwards. So let's uh, just remember where that is. That's the fourth tile in the first row. Cool. So now when we come into our tile map we just oops, need to uh, make sure we've got a character for that. I think we do actually. Yep, it's our uh, this symbol here, the carrot symbol, I think. And then we can just use wall tiles, which uh, we just use X for. And we just need to make sure we have a um, a line in here to draw our tile code. And I think um, very soon we're going to need a better way of managing our tiles instead of a giant list of if statements. But hey, it works for now. Um, but uh, that's probably going to be a topic of one of the next episodes. Um, I'm trying not to say we'll definitely do this or that next episode because uh, sometimes I change my mind, basically. <laughs> Uh, so I don't want to make too many promises. Oops, um, Flux has decided to turn on, disable for an hour. Highly, highly professional, highly professional. Um, cool. So this is going to be the first tile in the third row and then everything else should just be tiles we've already got. Cool. So, um, and because of the way our uh, our movement or tile code works, we immediately uh, cannot walk over these tiles anyway. So there we have a bit of a a bit of a ledge, and um, just because of the way we've laid out our screen, sort of at the top of the screen, it it looks like the top of a wall. At the bottom of the screen, it looks like it's a, a ledge we can fall off of. Um, cool. So I think that's about it for this episode. I'll just check we can, I haven't broken our um, room transition code. 
by moving between a couple of rooms as we uh, as we close the episode down here so yeah um upcoming topics so we need a better or a nicer way of managing our tiles um we want to add a add different kinds of rooms to our games so we're not always walking into the same room um we need to add actions to our game and interactions as well and collisions between um, different entities because then we can really get into things like attacks or pickups or um, mobs attacking the uh, attacking the player so these are all things um, I'm going to cover eventually I'm not sure what I'm going to do next but hey if there's anything you're particularly interested on um, on sorry anything you're particularly interested in then uh, let me know in the comments uh, and remember keep asking questions uh, because you know, a big part of this series is me answering them. Thanks very much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe, it really does help, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye for now.